Hello all, welcome back to Shaving with Petweg. And today we're going to do a head shave with the Mueller R102, which is an R41 head on a resin handle. Using Hendrick Classic and Company Shave Stick, a Citrus Bomb. And I thought for an aftershave, I'd go with 4711 and the clone. They kind of go together. And I can't remember the millimeters. Here's 24, 26. I'll have it in the description box. The Peregrino from PAA. No pre-shave today. I want to see how slick this shave stick is without pre-shave. And it is July 31st. So what happened on this date, July 31st, in history? Lots of things to choose from again. This, guys, this is a wonderful citrus scent. You, you guys know I like I like my dark scents, but this this is really a, a good citrus. It really is. And the reason I'm using the R41 head for a head shave. I got a couple bumps on the back of my head. Mosquito bites, I do believe. And I want them gone. I want them removed. I almost went with the knight's helmet, but then I decided I actually want to keep the skin on my head. I just want the bumps removed. So I'm going to use the, the R102. That's great. That's an awesome scent. Okay. I like that. Let's see how well she lathers up. All right, on this date, July 31st, 1620, 1621, 620, the Pilgrims left Leiden, Netherlands, for England, short stop in England, then on their journey in the Mayflower to the United States, to the New World. We weren't called the United States back then, it was just called the New World. Now, the pilgrims had migrated from England to Amsterdam because of religious persecution, because they had a different form of Christianity than England did, because England, it, I can't remember the date, I didn't look it up, sorry, my bad. England threw off the Roman Catholic Church and, be, and went with the Church of England with the king or queen being the head of the church, because I think it was... Henry, one of the Henrys, 14th, 16th, something, one of them, one of the Tudors, he wanted to divorce his wife, and the church wouldn't let him, wouldn't authorize it, so he said, and to divorce his wife so he can marry somebody else, they started Church of England, well, the pilgrims, their form of Christianity differ from the Church of England. In the Church of England, if you were not a member of the Church of England, was like all the other Christian sects back then. You were tortured, beaten, crucified, not crucified, stretched on a rack, all kinds of tortures, and eventually killed. If you didn't die from the torture. Um, unless you converted. And they didn't want that, so they fled to the Netherlands, and they ended up in Amsterdam. Now, there was originally only about a hundred of them, so they went to Amsterdam. Well, Amsterdam was an open city, all kinds of religions, all kinds of peoples living in Amsterdam, and they didn't want that either. So they moved to what was then the second largest city in Amsterdam, Leiden, L-E-I-D-E-N, or Leiden, I'm not sure, I say Leiden. Anyway, they moved there. And between 1609 and 1620, their population grew from 100 to 300. Well, things started getting iffy in the Netherlands. There was 
a coup. There was a military takeover of the government. There was talks of war because the 12-year pact peace treaty with Spain was coming to an end. So there was talks of war and everybody being enlisted. They just like, this is enough. We're out of here. We're going to go to New World. So they packed up all their shit and they were like the Beverly Hillbillies and they moved to Beverly. They moved to Beverly. Um, you know, the kin folks said, move away from there, move to Beverly. Well, they did. They stopped in England briefly as a short resupply from the Netherlands and then made their trip across the Atlantic on the Mayflower and landed on Plymouth Rock or at Plymouth Rock and set up their colony there. Now, a lot of people don't know they were not the first European settlers on the American continent in the New World. The Spanish had established Fort St. Augustine in 15... 65 a full 55 years before the pilgrims landed in North America and in 1609 104 English men no women and boys landed in Jamestown Virginia and established a colony there now, I could be wrong, but I really do not think so on what I'm going to say next. This was the starting of NAMBLA. If you don't know what NAMBLA is, that's the North American Man-Boy Love Association. Because why would you go to start a colony in a new world with no women? Unless you were a group of men who were afraid to be persecuted for their sexual beliefs. But back then, remember, homosexuality was a no-no. That was taboo to the church. There was no way that was going to be allowed. And especially with young boys. So, where would you be safe at? Away from the Church of England. You would be safe in the New World. Establishing a colony there. Well, how that colony was supposed to survive and progress with no women, I think they overlooked that fact. But they started the first NAMBLA group in the United States, right there at Jamestown in 1600, I think it was 1607 is when they started it, or 1609, well, either one. So the Pilgrims were actually the third European group to found a settlement in the United, what we call now the United States. Oh, as you saw in the picture, the blade in here is, is third use statum. So it's kind of sharp. Kind of smooth. And I'm hoping it's sharp enough to remove mosquito bites. Anyways, and that's the way I am. It's like I told you guys, I had that thing coming in here. I think it was some kind of cyst. It was really rock hard. It wasn't a zit. It was just rock hard piece of bubbled up skin. And I slid it off with a shave at. I don't play. When I want something gone, it goes. That's why I would never I would never have a horror movie based around me. Because you know how many times Jason and Freddy Krueger and what was Michael Myers got knocked down in their movies? You know all those times they got knocked down? With me, they never would have gotten up. If you remove something's head, it doesn't live anymore and it can't come back to life. A little more so. So yeah, any of those bad boys fall down around me, I'm taking their head. And that's the shortest horror movie in the, in the world. But anyways. And I have enough firepower to knock them on their ass. So, anyways. So, the Pilgrims land in 1620 in Plymouth Rock. Found their colony. Escaping religious per persecution from England. And then escaping the threats of having to go to war 
in the Netherlands. And they're the third colony to establish in North America, besides the fort at St. Augustine that the Spanish used when, as a waylay station, moving all the gold and silver that they were confiscating and stealing from all the natives in Central and South America. They would stop in St. Augustine, then they would stop in Bermuda on their way across the Atlantic back to Spain to take all their, their loot home. So, that was the first one. The second one was the Man Boy Love Association in Jamestown, Virginia. 104 gay English gentlemen and their boys. I'm sorry, that's the only reason I can come up with why Jamestown was founded by 104 men and boys. There is no other logical explanation how you would expect a colony to survive with just men and boys. So, anyways, with the Pilgrims landing in 1620, the, that was the first group of pilgrims to come over. They were the youngest, they were the strongest, and they were the most skilled. They were the ones that had the skills that could get a colony going. The rest stayed behind, earned more money to buy more supplies to bring to the colony once they came over. Because you got to remember, uh, travel by ship back then, that was a months long journey to cross the Atlantic to get to the New World. That wasn't hop on a jet and be there in 12 hours. Or a four day modern day ocean liner cruise. That took Those took months to cross the, the ocean like that. And we all know about how they eventually they didn't work with the Native Americans right off the bat Indians they did not work with them right off the bat there was skirmishes because they were invading Indian territory but once they built their fort around their village to put up the barricade it was kind of obvious to the Native Americans that they were going to stay a while and they weren't going to be easy to evict because they had firearms. So eventually they gained trust in each other and started working together. Wonderful scent. Ah, you guys know I like my dark scents, but that is a great citrus. No, it's not. It's not a big lather right now, but that's still slick. There's still. This is this is this is a Hendrix soap. There's going to be good residual slickness. This is a this is a good shape stick, guys. I really like the scent of that. I've been to St. Augustine. I've been to that fort. And it's made, I can't remember the material it's made out of, but it's made out of natural coral that's in that area, that's out in the ocean, around in that area. And that shit is as hard as concrete. It doesn't break up easily. And they made the walls thick enough of it. It's been attacked. It was attacked by British, I believe. Or the French. The British. I believe it was the British. Attacked that fort. And couldn't even dent the walls. 
Well, they did dent it, but they had a shitload of replacement for it because it was all sitting right out there in the water. But that, I have felt that coral because you're allowed to touch it when you're walking around there. And it is hard. It is concrete hard. And of course the pilgrims, they put up a wooden stockade fence around their little village of huts. And as the village grew, they had to expand the stockade fence. Because even though you're friendly with one tribe, if another tribe comes in, they may not be friendly. So you always want to keep your stockade up. And to answer your questions, yes, the mosquito bumps were removed. Let's see what we can get out of here. Oh, that's good. That's more than enough. So yes, the pilgrims were not the first Europeans to settle in North America, just so you know that. The Spanish were the first, and the second was a group of horny old Englishmen and then the third group was the ones escaping war possibly going to war and religious persecution to practice the religion peacefully and by themselves. And then the rest of us motherfuckers came in and ruined everything. Excuse my French. That's true. There was a good thing going until some other asshole came along and ruined it. See? But that's what happened on July 31st. The pilgrims left the Netherlands, bound for England, ultimately their journey to the New World. I think it was September, I think it was September that they landed in Plymouth Rock. Oh, that smells so good. have a sniff fest with that later on. That's wonderful. Alright. Time for the fireworks. Oh crap. All over. All over. Oh crap. That thing took off every layer of dead skin that was on the head. And maybe a couple live ones. Oh. That's about a two and a half on top of the head. Oh, on the back, on the back. Oh, that's a board. Oh, oh, oh.
This will let you know if you got a clean shave. It will let you know that you are alive too. Wow. Wowzer. <sighs> Still stinging. I'm gonna let it go to the stinging subsides. Oh. Oh. Hopefully you learned something about that. Well, at least now you know the Spanish were the first ones here in the Americas to establish a European outpost in the Americas, and a group of horny gay Englishmen were. Like, like little boys were the second group and then a religiously persecuted, persecuted group were the third what a mix match huh it's too bad the, the third group didn't land where the second group was huh that colony died out though the Jamestown colony died out um, speculation is it was malaria they killed them all but they buried everybody in unmarked graves so that the natives didn't see that their uh, their numbers were dwindling. They wanted to keep that secret. You know, since they couldn't populate and make more. Butch Hazel. I have absolutely no proof that that's what kind of group they were in Jamestown. But think about it. Seriously, 104 men and boys, not a female to be seen. What do you think was going on? Forty-seven eleven, the original Cologne from way back when. Using this an aftershave. Ooh, smells good. It matches that citrus pretty well. And my Johnson Johnson baby lotion. Yeah, I don't have a filter, guys. I say what's on my mind. And I'll put a couple drops of this in there, too. Just for fun. Oh, that's good. That smells great. I like that 4711. You know, they make that, they've got peach, strawberry, watermelon, um, lemon, lime, lavender. They make this now with several, several flavors. It's inexpensive. It just doesn't last that long. It's like four, six hours max length of smell. But it's the original. This is this is the original formula. It's the original scent. The formula has probably changed over the years, but it's the closest approximation we have to date to the original formula. How about that? How about we say that? Does that sound about right? Oh, yeah. It's clean. Our 41 head to the rescue. It will remove hair and skin and mosquito bumps because they're gone, baby. <laughs> I got bloody spots back there. That's it. All right, guys, appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed the little history today. I'll see you tomorrow for a face shave every two days because I'm doing the Magnificent 11. If I don't do it that way, I'll never get them caught up. So I'm going to do... You know what? I might wait till Tuesday. So to be surprised whether you get a, a video tomorrow or Tuesday, because I might wait. I really don't have much to, to show. That shave I did with the Gillette Tech was pretty good with the blade I had in it. And um, well, after I switch it to the, the uh, Iridium Super, so the Wizomat Super Iridium blade. When I switched to that blade and did that last pass, it, it cleaned me good. That's pretty close. 
it's been a full day and there's barely any whispers there so i might wait till tuesday but anyways all right guys thank you very much for being here don't forget the affiliate link when you get 25 dollars, i get a gift card for you guys and give it away love you all from here enough of the babbling fat guy in the chair you're in the chair next happy shaves out there guys